Welcome, everyone. I think we're going to go ahead and get this webinar started. It is being recorded, and um, I know it will be shared out later, so um, just as a heads up. I'm Lindsay Love. I'm the Senior Director of the Office of Undergraduate Academic Affairs, and we're really happy to have such a good number here for our session on new student summer academic planning. Um, I also want to give you a heads up that we will save questions for the end of the session. Um, because it's very likely that our wonderful host will, will answer your questions as they go through the presentation. And then I'm going to let our hosts uh, introduce themselves to you now. It's Lindsay. Um, so my name is Megan Sandbury. I'm the Associate Director for the Office of Undergraduate Academic Affairs. So Lindsay and I um, work on a team with professional advisors in our office um, that help students in their academic planning. My name is Miranda Smith. I am the Transfer Services Coordinator in the Registrar's Office. Uh, so my job is basically transferring all of the credits from AP, IB, and other institutions um, into William and Mary. Um, that's... Great. So um, we're going to take a little bit of time today just to cover a few things and then obviously answer some questions for you all. And there is the Q&A um, chat feature that's at the bottom of your screen there that you're welcome to submit the questions to um, as we go. And then, like, as Lindsay said, we'll collect them at the end um, and answer them for you. Um, so today we'll talk a little bit about what does academic advising look like at William & Mary. Um, part of that is an online module called College Studies over the summer. Um, and then talk about some transfer credit um, things for incoming students as well. So basically we want to cover what does it look like in the summertime for an incoming student as far as their coursework and planning um, for the fall semester. So what does academic advising look like here at William & Mary? Um, probably most of your students have um, worked with either a school counselor um, or another kind of advisor probably along their way. Um, or even all of family are considered advisors and helping them kind of think through um, what their plans are academically and all kinds of things. Um, so I, the advising here at William Mary is very much the same. Um, it's meant to help students think through their major options, um, what kind of things are open to them academically, it helps them navigate academic policy. Um, so all the things that are listed in the catalog that are the rules for students here on campus, we're happy to help them think through what that means. Um, for them. We're here to help them really connect with a lot of things across campus that helps their academic experience. Um, and that could be faculty, that could be peers, um, co-curricular activities, or kind of a hub for helping students um, in their academic planning. And the other piece that's part of our office is also on um, fellowships. Um, so there are lots of fellowship opportunities for students, and it's not too early to start thinking about them um, as they come in. And so we have advisors in our office that can help students kind of think through that process too. So we're really here to help them from the start all the way through post-graduation plans, potentially with um, fellowships and things like that. At William & Mary specifically, we have a faculty advisor model. So um, it's really important at William & Mary that students are able to connect with faculty in that way, um, get some personalized experience with them. Um, and so our role here from that office is to help support faculty advisors um, and help them navigate with your students as well. So they will have a pre-major faculty advisor um, that they will be assigned from our office that they will connect with during orientation. So faculty advisors will be available for them in August when everybody's back on campus. Um, and they will work with that faculty advisor for at least um, two semesters potentially until they declare essentially and then they'll have a major faculty advisor that will help them um, complete their major degree. So they will have a faculty advisor there to guide them and help them understand academics and what that looks like and um, adjusting to life here on campus taking courses. What does it mean to be in their field of study? What kind of research should they do? It's a really great opportunity for students to um, get to know all of those pieces parts um, from a faculty member. So I mentioned I'll have a pre-major advisor. So they're there to support incoming students and they are required to meet them at least three times during the first year to discuss their course selection, um, any interest in major or minor area of study, um, and really to help, like I said, them step into the academic world at Miami. Um, 
they're required to do that by getting a pin for registration, which is a, basically a number that they would get that they have to put in order to register for their classes. So there's a little bit of a mechanism of support there so that we know that they're meeting with somebody and talking things over. Um, and then after that, those first three meetings, if they haven't declared their major, which they probably won't. typically if they're first year, sometimes transfer students will be with their pre-major advisor for one semester, maybe two, but whenever they're, um, if they're still with their pre-major advisor, they can still meet with them at any point after sort of those three required things. And certainly even the first year, they can meet with them at any point outside those first three um, required meetings as well. I also talked about um, our team. So we have a team of professional advisors um, here in the Office of Undergraduate Academic Affairs, and we are available to students to help them think through general um, academic planning, how to declare a major, what do they think they want to study, how does their course schedule look, same kinds of things. Um, and again, also here to support faculty and be a resource to them as well. And they are welcome to become advisors in the office at any point in their journey. So it could be when they first come in, it could be a few semesters in. Um, we're always happy to uh, make appointments with students and kind of help them work through um, anything that they need and kind of connecting them with resources there. So as part of in, um, the program for incoming students, really what I'm laying out for you is kind of the whole support system for students as they come into William and Mary and make their um, way into academic planning. And so the next piece of that is a um, online module we call College Studies. And so that happens in the summertime for incoming students. Um, and it basically will walk them through two pieces of their time here at Lehman Mary. So one is walking them through how to prepare for registration. So they'll look at things like, what kind of majors does Lehman Mary offer? What do those programs look like? How do I check my transfer credits and if it works? Um, how do I know my requirements? What is the general education, which we call college curriculum? Um, so it will walk them through each piece of kind of what they need to consider in planning. And that helps them prepare for registration in the summertime. Um, so they will have a registration window in the summer. Um, we will be there to support students um, through the summer as they work through college studies. And they will also be um, connected with a peer advisor as well. So that's the second piece of that. Um, they're designated a peer advisor as part of college studies. And that's typically an upperclassman who has gone through the whole thing before. So they're a really good resource in helping students plan, um, helping students plan their schedule based on kind of their experiences and help them frame that. And they were able to plan for them as part of college studies to make sure they've got something set um, for the fall um, that they can work with. The second part of that is a um, piece that's on uh, information literacy and library resources. So there is a whole module about basically how do you use um, information, seek information, in the world of um, college studies. So how do you seek information um, and prepare yourself to complete assignments at the college level? And so the research libraries at SWEM Library have developed a really nice um, module for students to walk through that helps them think about things like that information literacy. And they're also available to help support that if students have any questions as well along the way. I know that was the really fly by version. Um, and I see that there are some questions that have come in so about registration, which we can tackle too. Um, but I do want to hand it over to Miranda because I think she's got a really important piece of the puzzle of support for this summer. Um, some of you may have already um, been in touch with her. And so I will hand it over to her. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, my name is Miranda Smith. I'm the Transfer Services Coordinator. Um, so basically, I've been the person going through all of your transcripts. Um, line by line and typing in what it will come over as uh, to William and Mary in the system. There are a couple of different things that we are looking for in a couple of different ways. Um, credits will come in. Uh, if you want to hit the next slide, Megan. Awesome. So there's a couple different uh, kinds of credits. We're doing AP, IB, CLEP, if you guys have taken that. Um, so these, we will need the scores to come directly from the agency that you took it with. Um, so for AP, it's usually College Board. 
IB has their own IBO website. Um, you'll, if you haven't sent those to us already or you're confused as to why they're not in the system, we do not take those scores off of high school transcripts or other college transcripts. They'll need to come directly from the board to us. Um, so you can hop online to their website and order them. And William and Mary Registrar's office should be one of the options to send to. Um, as far as college credits, uh, official transcripts will need to come from the institution to us. We will not be taking any college credits off of high school transcripts. If it was dual enrollment, we'll not be taking any um, transcripts from students or parents or um, it'll have to come directly from the institution to us. Usually that's through Parchment or National Student Clearinghouse. Um, if you're unsure or you haven't sent them to us officially that way yet, uh, you can contact whichever institution and see how they do it. Their registrar's office will know. Um, and then we also are doing military transcripts. So uh, J usually, usually uh, JST Joint Services Transcript is who sends them to us. It'll have to come through them to us. Um, and those are reviewed on a case-by-case -case basis. Uh, with military, it's a little bit difficult because, um, and I'll get to it in the next slide. In general, we kind of have to have an equivalent or something similar that we offer at William & Mary. Um, and we don't offer a whole lot of military courses, uh, military-like courses. So um, it will be something that gets reviewed on a case-by-case -case basis. Um, we do not accept transfer credits for remedial coursework, so courses that are deemed below our introductory level of courses. Um, so things like college algebra, we start around calculus and we have higher level algebra courses, but college algebra um, and things of that nature are deemed by the math department to be lower than our introductory coursework. Um, orientation courses, so first year seminars, uh, will not transfer over um, just because they're, they're very institution specific usually, uh, designed to help freshmen kind of get into college. And we have our own introductory courses that a lot of transfer students will just receive the credit or the they'll receive the exemption from them for us, but we won't be transferring other course uh, institution-specific first-year seminar courses over. Things like training programs um, is another kind of thing that won't really transfer. If you want to click the next slide for me. All right, uh, so courses will come over as two categories. They'll either be William & Mary equivalent credit. Um, you will see these come over as a specific course number. So it'll be math 111 is calculus one. So if you took a calculus one course somewhere else and it's coming over as equivalent credit, you will see it as math 111 or math 112 for calculus two, et cetera. Um, these courses are courses that match very closely to what we also offer. Um, usually it's pretty easy to put general courses that match everyone basically as the same criteria that they teach in Calculus 1 or Bio 101 or uh, Psychology 101. They're all pretty much the same curriculum, and so they will come over as our equivalent. Um, these can fulfill college curriculum requirements, major minor requirements, um, thing proficiencies, things like that. The other thing you'll see on your transcript is elective credit. So if it's something that doesn't really match specifically to something that we offer or um, it's not quite the same, but we have the department for it. Um, so I know one that I've seen a lot recently is urban sociology, um, which is something that we don't have specifically, but we do have a sociology department and it's probably something that they would teach and some capacity, either as a topics course, maybe, or in the future, we might get that. 
Um, so we will give elective credit for that, and it'll come over as um, sociology 1xx or 2xx you might see. Um, this is elective credit. So we think you deserve credit for it. It's something we might teach. It was a rigorous course, but we don't exactly offer it right now, so it won't be equivalent. Um, and these courses will not apply towards proficiencies or major minor requirements, but they will add to your overall credit count. Students are required to have 120 credits to graduate, and these will count towards that. So they do help you overall. It was just a course that specifically wouldn't count towards um, equivalent credit at William & Mary. You can hit the next, awesome. Oh, great. So the transfer credit process, um, we will receive the official transcript. A lot of you have sent them to admissions. Um, so we're seeing those through the admissions website actually. Um, you don't need to send them individually to us. Um, and it'll need to come directly from the institution to William & Mary. Like I said earlier, we don't accept them from students or parents, anything like that. Uh, we go through course by course, line by line. We look at the course you took. We look at the title of it, the grade of it. We do require a grade of C or higher. Um, anything C minus or lower, we will not transfer over for credit. Um, we'll go through line by line and see if we've transferred it before. If it's something pretty general, we definitely know how it'll come over. If it's something a little more niche, we'll kind of, you know, look, is this something that the departments have allowed before? Um, I'm going to throw it out there. I don't know much about things like physics or <laughs> business or education or um, the little things going on in the departments. I don't know all the courses and all of that. So oftentimes, if it's something a little more on the complicated side, I will send it over to the departments. We have a contact in each department who reviews uh, syllabi and courses and lets us know how the department feels about it coming over as certain things. Um, so we are not the gods deciding what comes over is what. Oftentimes it's the departments that are making those decisions because they know what they offer and they know how to look at courses and determine the rigor of the course. Um, so yeah, departmental review may be needed. Um, then we will basically post those credits. So we'll type in everything. Um, this is coming over as this, this is coming over as this. We put it into your account and we posted it. Um, for the fall, pretty much all the preliminary evaluations have been posted. We are now going through the um, final transcripts that are coming in and posting the final semester. If you do not see any credits on your account, that uh, shouldn't be like that. So if you wanna send us an email, um, just letting us know I don't see anything. Um, what's happening, we can check your account and make sure that it's there. Um, another note is that courses taken pass fail or with satisfactory basis, um, sometimes the transcripts will say um, a pass, a P or an S are based on a C grade or higher. Sometimes institutions will base them on a D grade or higher. Um, and because we only accept uh, C or higher grades for transfer, um, we will need a letter from the person who taught the course saying that your coursework was at a C level or higher. Um, so if you have any courses that haven't transferred over and it's because you took it pass fail or satisfactory, unsatisfactory, um, if you just reach out and have us double check what your transcript says about that, um, we're happy to take a look at that and just double check. If you want to skip to the next one. Ah, yes, how to view your credits. Um, if you haven't looked at them yet, I would highly encourage you to do so, especially we're always willing to uh, relook at things, reevaluate things. Um, so if there's something you feel like you should have gotten credit for that you didn't or um, 
you know, you're just unsure, feel free to send us an email. It's possible that we just based on the course title could not figure out where this course might fall. Um, and we'll need a syllabus from you. Uh, and the syllabus will send to the departments just for them to double check that and get back to us. Um, but viewing the credits, if you go into banner, log into banner, student, student records, your student profile, and then on the left-hand side, there'll be a little list of things and your unofficial William and Mary academic transcript should be one of those options. And you can just click in that and see everything that's come over. The other way that you can look at it, if you've deposited, is degree works. Um, so you can sign in and it'll kind of show you all of the courses that have come over. Whichever way is easier for you to look at is the way that you should go. Um, and again, if you log in and you see something and you think, I feel like I should have gotten more credits or I feel like that course it was like a really rigorous course that I took and I should have gotten credit for that. Um, it's possible it's just something we've never seen before. And so as we're quickly trying to enter in thousands of courses off of hundreds of transcripts, we just kind of skipped over it um, because if we don't know exactly where it falls in, we just kind of have to move on and ask for a syllabus later. So if there's anything at all, we're happy to take a look at it if you want to send us an email. Uh, is my email on the next page? Oh, no. I'll put my email in the chat so everybody, oh, there. Yes, yes. So transfer credit at wm.edu. Uh, if you just want to send an email over with any questions, problems, concerns, um, whatever you got, <laughs> we are totally willing to reevaluate or relook over something or let you know why something did or didn't transfer. Great. Thank you, Miranda. I'm sorry. I apologize. I just saw the note that people were having trouble hearing me. So I'm hoping now I adjust my microphone just a little bit that that's a little better. If anybody wants to drop something in the Q&A to let me know if you can hear. That would be great. Maybe. Beautiful. Thank you. Okay. So I know that there's a few questions in the chat about um, registration and what does that look like for the summer for students um, and you know what's the timeline how does that work so I want to talk a little bit about that next um, next week by June 1st um, students will be enrolled in um, college studies which is the blackboard course so that's when students can get in there um, and start looking at the material in there and typically I would say if you were like feeling really ambitious about it and wanted to like do it in one day it probably could be done um, but don't do that uh, we don't necessarily recommend that students power through in one day because you really have to take some time to kind of read the information absorb um, and make some plans um, going forward using that information. So they will have access to that starting June 1st. We'll have a kickoff webinar for that as well that um, you all can attend if you'd like to do that to just do a little bit more um, overview and college studies uh, specifically. And again, what the summer looks like. So it'll be some familiar information from today. Um, and then our office is hosting webinars, uh, weekly webinars for students in um, June and July. Um, it'll be Tuesdays will be for transfer students and Thursdays will be for uh, new students, uh, first year students that are joining us and those will be from 3.30 to 4.30 um, and they'll also be available online so we'll tackle topics like registration, um, transfer credits again, um, we'll talk about what does it mean to build a plan, what does faculty advising look like, so we have some topics laid out for folks to ask some questions of us through the summer. And then, um, you know, in late June, potentially, or um, early, uh, mid or late June, they'll be connected with their peer advisor as part of college studies. Um, so they'll have support from their peer advisors also as they work through that. And then in late June, if you're a transfer student or early July, if you're a first year student, um, is when that first registration window um, happens. So it, um, at that point, you will have done the first part of college studies. So you will have walked through how to register, how to find classes, how to plan, and you will have submitted a plan for peer advisors to review as part of college studies as well. Um, and so that is what's gonna prepare you to do some registration in the summer. 
And that registration process will, you'll each have a time ticket for the date. And all of those dates are available currently on the registrar's website. Um, and I can drop that link in the chat um, in a minute, or if Lindsay, you wouldn't mind snagging that and dropping in the chat, that'd be great. Um, and so that first round of registration is really a chance to get a couple classes if you're a first year student. Um, and a, at least a portion of your schedule as a transfer student um, to get that practice and banner, get things set, um, and get some, some of that under your belt, so to say. So that will be in either late June if you're transfer or early July. Um, you do not need a pin for that registration. That's what I talked about before. So this one, we don't have a pin because we'll, basically you complete the first part of college studies and then you'll be good to go for that. Um, and so you won't have a pin. You don't have to have a specific meeting. You just have the opportunity to kind of use college studies and ask some questions along the way. And then by August, so you'll hit orientation. Uh, you'll be here on campus. Or your student will be here on campus. There'll be a number of academic sessions that are going to happen as part of orientation. Um, students will be assigned their pre-major advisor during orientation. So that's when they'll find out who their pre-major advisor is, is during orientation. They'll get a communication from them about meeting during orientation. There's a day. Um, the Monday of orientation to meet with their faculty advisor, go over what they registered for already, make any changes, have a discussion with them. Um, and then they will have another window during orientation to register, and that's when they will utilize a PIN. So they will meet with their faculty advisor, the faculty advisor will give them a PIN, and then they will register for the rest of their schedule or make any changes to their schedule that they need to before the start of the semester. So there's a number of checkpoints that students will hit. Um, throughout the summer um, to kind of check in with folks and make sure that everything is moving along as it should. Um, and every time a student registers here at William & Mary, they will get a time ticket. Um, so College Studies will walk them through how to find that in Banner and take a look at what that looks like. Um, so they will have a date assigned to them and a time ticket, which basically tells them when they have access to Banner to register for courses. Um, and so they'll practice that this round as well, looking that up, putting it on their calendar, setting a reminder for themselves to make sure that they're up and ready to go um, with um, registration. So that is kind of, again, the quick timeline of what happens over the summer. I see there's some more questions coming in. Um, so I wanna leave this up, but then I think we're happy to answer some questions. Lindsay, if you wanna kick it off. And thank you, Megan and Miranda for the wonderful overview. Um, I'm gonna start reading that. Oh, Miranda's fascinating. I'll start reading the chat questions um, out loud and then Megan and Miranda can answer them. Um, so here's one. If a counselor uploads to the community college transcript through the Common App as the year end progresses, is that sufficient or does the transcript need to come directly from the community college? Mm, sorry, what, what was the question? I think you sure. cut it a little bit. It's okay. Can you hear me? Yeah. Let okay. me... I don't see it. I didn't say it again. Oh, there yeah. it is. Okay. Okay. Um, Oh yeah, okay. Yeah, um, we don't see the transcripts that come through the Common App unless um, admissions has taken it and put it into their profile. So it's best to have it come directly from the community college through Parchment or NSC, depending on which one they use. Thank you, Amanda. Um, can someone talk a little bit more about the IB grades? Those will be available in July. When do they send it in and what can be credited? How do they find out what, how they get credits for what? Perfect. I actually just put in the webinar chat the pre-matriculation test credit chart. Um, this is basically all of the tests, AP, IB, CLEP, uh, probably some other ones in there. Um, but it's a list of all of the tests that we accept credit for, what score they need to have for that test and what exact credits they would be earning for that test. Um, so if you can see that in there, great. If you can't, let us know. Um, you can send them in whenever. We will accept IB credits even when they're juniors, but <laughs> uh, if you want those credits and don't want to take that course and then not get credit for it, um, as soon as you can would be best. Um, but there is no hard deadline for when we accept AP IB credits. Um, we'll accept them whenever you send them in and we'll take a look and evaluate them from there. 
Miranda, is that the same for a uh, transfer credit from dual enrollment courses taken in, in high school? Is there a deadline for those scores? Right, no. So we'll we'll take a look at transcripts and credits whenever we get them. Um, so there is no deadline for those. Um, how can people see a list of Paul 100 or Paul 150 courses? Um, so probably the easiest way, I think, and well, in my opinion, to see the um, courses that are listed, we call those attributes. So any course that either meets a call request call curriculum requirement or um, a proficiency, they all have what we call attributes attached to them um, in Banner. And so this will be one of the things that students will walk through in college studies, but I'll drop the link in the chat as well. It's called Open Course List. Um, and as part of that, you can search by attribute. So um, I believe it only lets you search for one attribute at a time, but you can select the attribute. Um, you'd wanna leave all of the subjects because you would take a course in anything. Um, and then if you hit search, it will produce all of the courses that have a call 100 or call 150 attribute on it. And then it can show you current enrollment then too. So I will drop that in, um, but that's probably um, the quickest way. And then once they get a little bit more comfortable with Banner, you can also do a Banner search for classes um, within the system there that will allow you to search the same way. So you could pick an attribute, you can even pick a subject. So if you're looking for a call 100 in sociology, you could pick sociology, call 100 attribute, and then um, search and it will produce any of those that have that on it. So there's a couple different ways, but um, that's probably the easiest. Um, I think this is the making question. Is there such a thing as a first semester sample course schedule? And where would they see it? So part of college studies is walking students through that plan. And within that, when they're making their own, there are a few samples to kind of show like how students could balance potentially their um, schedule between the first two semesters. Because when I say plan, I guess I should specify, we're really not expecting students to plan for their entire time here at William & Mary during college studies, not at all. In fact, really, it's just about that fall semester and maybe a little bit into the spring semester just to kind of think about, you know, do you want to take a call 150 in the fall and a 100 in the spring? or vice versa, kind of think a little bit um, out beyond the fall, but really it's meant to kind of walk them through their fall registration. Um, and so within that, there are a few samples that um, can kind of help guide them as they're thinking through that. And the peer advisors are a super great resource for that because they've built their schedules um, and they're happy to share kind of tips and tricks that they've learned about combining certain classes together and what that looks like in course load, um, workload, things like that. Thank you. This is a specific AP question. If a student took AP Physics, AP US History, AP Biology, and got a four, um, will they at least get elective credit? They see a score of five is required for equivalent credit. Yeah, so unfortunately, um, whatever score and then credit is on there is, it's all or nothing. Um, unfortunately, and that comes straight from the department. So I did, I was looking at it. Um, but it would be a score of five needed for any credit um, or any exemption, it looks like, from any of those courses. Uh, so unfortunately, no, with just a score of four on any of those tests, they would not be receiving anything. Um, what do they do if they haven't received a new student inventory link to match with an advisor? Um, I would say if you haven't received a link, it might be rolling a little bit, so it kind of might depend on when you deposited potentially, but um, I would say if you haven't seen the link, um, because that deadline is coming up really quick as well, just to reach out to the STEP office, so it's um, the Student Transition Engagement Program's office, um, and they're, they're like, you're basically probably where you're receiving very many of your emails from at the moment, um, and they're here to help you kind of guide you through all that. I'll drop their email in the chat as well, um, but they're a great resource. And if you haven't gotten something, feel free to reach out to them and they'll um, check on it for you. And can you remind us again when new students will find out about their advisors? Absolutely, start of orientation. So they should, they will get a notification from their faculty advisor, will reach out and say, hello, I'm your faculty advisor um, and set up a meeting with them. Um, they can also at that point then see it in uh, degree works as well um, and in their student profile and banner. So they can see it a couple places um, if they're checking and um, they will hear from their faculty advisor as well at the start of orientation. Wonderful. 
Um, if a student wanted to, quote, repeat a college level course that they took in high school, what's the course of action to take? Yeah, so we um, have a revoke college credit earned before matriculation to William & Mary form that they'll need to fill out. I am finding it right now to put it in the chat. Um, and you'll just need to fill out that form and submit it to our office and we'll remove that credit from your account. Um, it is non renegable So once you revoke that credit, if they then didn't do as well as they wanted to in that course here, we cannot put the original credit back onto their account. So just something to keep in mind, I will put the link to our form in the chat so everybody has access to that. Thank you. Um, could somebody please repeat what you need to pin for and what you don't? Sure. I can do that. Um, so in the summertime, when they do that first round of registration, they will not need a pin. So they're going to go through college studies, they're going to work out a plan, they're going to get into Banner, and they're going to register for some courses. They don't need a pin for that. For the next, um, so that's them registering for their fall classes. In the fall, they'll have, um, sorry, before the fall to finish off their schedule. So during orientation, they'll meet with their faculty advisor. They'll get another window to um, finish their schedule or change their schedule in orientation. And for that one, they will need to have a pin from their faculty advisor um, that shows that they met with them and had some discussion and made some plans. Um, so they will have um, one summer registration without the pin. They will have one over orientation where they would need the pin for the fall. And then in the fall, when they go to register um, for the spring semester courses, they will need a pin for that registration because they will have a meeting with their faculty advisor. And then again, in the spring, when they go to register for fall 2024 courses, they will have a pin um, to register because they will meet with their faculty advisor. So basically in the first two semesters, when before they register for anything beyond this very first window in the summer, they'll need a pin and they'll need to have checked in with somebody. Um, their faculty advisor typically, but they will need to meet with them, um, the faculty advisor specifically to get that pin number to register. And that just helps, you know, again, it makes sure that they're kind of checking in with somebody, they've got a plan in place, they've been able to talk to somebody about it. There's an advising period every semester, so the faculty advisor will reach out and set up an appointment um, if they haven't heard from the student. And um, so they'll have that in place. So basically it's in their first two semesters here at William Mary, they're required to have a pin to register for classes. Thank you, Megan. Um, this person, we did put out the registration dates, but they are asking, um, will you receive a link to register? I guess, so how is registration done? How and where? And then um, will all freshmen be able to register at the same time or are there rounds? But we've since also included the scheduling. Yeah, so they, um... There isn't a link, registration's built into Banner. So again, like part of college studies is walking through how do they access Banner and how do they access registration um, as part of their student profile in Banner. Um, so they don't necessarily get a link. That's why it'll be important for them to check their time ticket to make sure they're ready to log in and be in the right screen in Banner when they go to register. Um, so that will help them kind of think through that process. Um, and then as far as everybody registering at the same time, they're I, they will be broken up into a couple groups typically. Um, and so that's why it's, again, it's important to, to look at your time ticket specifically. And so if you're talking to maybe some peers or they might not register at the same time as you. And so you wanna make sure that you're kind of paying attention in Banner um, to what that is and making sure you mark that down. So um, I think that answered the questions, but let me know if it didn't. Thank you. What exactly is a call fast? The college curriculum is our um, general education requirement. So every student um, comes into William and Mary and they're required to do a set of requirements as part of their William and Mary degree in addition to their major requirements. So um, it's something again that in college studies, they'll walk the students through taking a look at all those requirements and you can see them if they were to log into DegreeWorks now if you've deposited, you can actually see there's a whole block in there that says college requirement courses. And so those are things like um, a math proficiency, a foreign language proficiency, those first year courses that we call college 100 and 150. And those are um, 
150 is really about um, writing and developing your uh, academic writing as a college student. Um, and 100 is looking into a, an issue and kind of um, developing a project around that. And those are smaller courses, those 100s and 150s. Um, because they are done in the first year, they're kind of nice smaller courses that students can get to know faculty and, and fellow students in. Um, there's a call 300 course that talks about um, uh, like students can do call 300 by studying abroad. Um, it's all about diverse perspectives um, beyond our own perspective here. Um, so it's are things that are structured for students that they will take as part of their degree here at William and Mary. Um, and I can drop the link for the call requirements in there as well um, for people to take a look at. But again, students will get to walk through all of that um, as part of college studies because that's a part of being a William and Mary student. Megan? And the next question asks about the perspectives of Constructive Dialogue Institute. I know I answered someone in chat. Um, I, I can put in the chat, it looks like there is a, um, that all new students should complete six lessons of perspectives, an online platform developed by the Constructive Dialogue Institute. Your question is, is it required? I don't know if Miranda or Megan know. It appears to be based on the text on our page if that is encouraged. It's not managed by my office, but I will put that in chat where there's more information you need to contact. But either of you know if that is required? Nope. So I would contact, you know, if it's encouraged, I would say there's probably good value in doing it. So I would encourage you as a student to complete it. But in the chat, um, there's a person uh, contact information about that, that person if you have additional questions. Um, are there specific peer advisors for student athletes? So there isn't necessarily um, a mechanism for doing specific peer advisors for student athletes, although we do um, have student athletes as peer advisors. Um, so certainly there's a chance that athletes can work with other athletes. Um, and I know that the athletics office also probably does a lot of work with students and connecting them with their peers and teammates and things as well. Um, so although, it, yes, we have them, they may or may not get one, um, but they are there to help support. So we can certainly connect students with them. Thank you. If a student wants to meet with a pre-professional advisor, such as pre-physical therapy, when and how does that happen? So the, probably that would be a, during orientation. Um, there should be a session with pre-professional advisors that'll be part of orientation. Um, and then certainly their contact information is on the website. Um, they may not necessarily be available during the summer until orientation when everybody's back on campus. So that's why it's a little bit easier to reach out at that point um, and go to the general session, kind of get some more general information from them. And then you could set up an appointment with them at any point um, from that point forward. So. And really anytime, it's just that in the summertime, maybe a little bit more spotty. So you might wanna wait definitely until orientation, they'll be there. Thank you. And I just put the pre-professional advisor information in the chat. Um, when do you start creating your schedule? You might've gone over this a little bit, Megan. Is it during the summer or during orientation? So it'll be during the summer. So that'll be part of the module is to, to work on a plan. And then they will submit that for review by the peer advisors um, so that they can take a look at all of those schedules and kind of give a little bit of general feedback about things that um, they may or may not change or what's in good shape or things they might suggest you do a little bit differently. But that, that fall plan will be set through the summer and then they can make changes and tweak that um, before the orientation registration session as well. The more information they kind of collect along the way, then there may be changes and that's totally fine, but they will actually work through a plan um, as part of that part one of college studies. Thank you. And um, how exactly do the students get that plan to register? Their faculty advisor will email it to them. Um, so they'll meet with their faculty advisor and then their faculty advisor will email it to them so that they've got it um, and then they'll be good to go. Thank you, Miranda's typing an answer to the AP. English lit, you know, I'll force you to just talk now. <laughs> I'm going to do this to open here. Yeah. English lit, answer questions. I only see English literature as saw an English lit page on. Oh, the new literature. Okay. This one's, pardon me for not keeping up with our chat group. Um, can you take a call required class over the summer in the future, not this summer, to fulfill a call requirement, for example, a math class? 
Yes. Yes, you can um, typically call requirement courses. Anything that has a call in front of it needs to be taken here at William and Mary, but they do offer a number of call requirement classes um, at, during the summer time to take them. Um, math proficiency may be a little bit different, um, and I can drop the link in the chat that kind of outlines um, what needs to be taken here um, versus can be taken at a different institution. But um, typically, if it has a COLL in front of the course attribute, like we talked about, that they'll need to take it away and marry. And yep, they can take those over the summer. Um, seems to be a second question. So I'm just going to say out loud, Miranda, do you need a five for AP? Oh, I was answering it as you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, three um, to five is what it looks like but you can on the chart just to clarify for people the scores if it's four dash five it'll be a four or a five and then if it's just one number like um environmental science is a five to receive credit we only accept a five so it'll either be a lower score dash a higher score and any of those and in between works and if it's just one number that's all that's the number we accept uh nothing higher nothing lower thanks um are all the steps needed for course registration part of that checklist they learned about last week i'm guessing maybe the tribe guide checklist Yes, so there's a couple questions I think sort of related to that that I think I saw in the chat um, about steps in college studies and checklists, kind of steps, deadlines, things like that. So I was going to say yes, a lot. All of this is basically on the tribe guide for you, and it's in various places. So I'm happy to drop um, the stuff about college studies specifically in the chat, but it is outlined there about deadlines for foreign language proficiency placement exam and um, registration steps are in there like it's outlined on the tribe guide so it does give you access to basically all of those pieces that we're going to walk students through in blackboard um, on the website as well so i'll drop that in the chat so you all have it um, and that's kind of a nice handy reference because there's lots of good information in that tribe guide call 100 150 classes should students take in their first year um, so we encourage students to spread them out so they would take one call 100 and, and one call 150. That's all they need to do is just one of each. So split them out so that they're one in the fall and one in the spring, typically. Um, it doesn't always work perfectly that way. It's just those can be a little bit more intensive courses or four credits. So we try to have them kind of spread those out a little bit, but they only need to take one of each and they will typically do that within their first, at least I would say three semesters. Um. Someone is asking about an earlier orientation date for parents that are overseas and must return to August 24th. Is there anyone I would say for that one, I dropped the step email into um, the chat there. <clears throat> so I would reach out to the step office and just let them know your circumstances um, and see if they can give you some information about what to do. Next steps for that. Will joint degree students get a separate advisor? Yes, yeah, so joint degree, which is our um, St. Andrews program, I think is probably what you're con um, considering the joint degree program. Um, we'll get a major advisor assigned to them over the summer. So they will still do college studies and walk through some of these steps, but it's gonna look a little bit different for them and they will have the opportunity um, to connect with an advisor in that program specifically over the summertime and meet with them uh, to talk things through as well. Once students get a PIN number, will it stay the same going forward? No, it changes each time. So they, again, it's a mechanism to kind of make sure that they're checking in with someone. So we want to make sure that they're doing that. So it'll change every um, every time they need one. Thanks. Do, does William & Mary offer online summer courses? There are some online summer courses um, that it just depends on kind of what you're looking for. But I have seen some online um, computer science courses, I've seen some online call 300 course call requirement courses. So yes, it just kind of depends on what you're looking to take. Is there a writing proficiency requirement? 
Um, each major has a writing proficiency requirement that's sort of built into their major. So it's not necessarily part of the general education college curriculum um, beyond like that the call 150 is focused on writing and academic writing, um, but it's built into typically to their major curriculum that there will be some sort of course that's gonna meet their writing requirement for that specific um, major or program. Thank you. Um, when I looked at that open course link, I searched for column 100 and 115, it didn't look like that many were open. Will there be more classes added to accommodate freshmen in the fall? So, um, our classes are nice and small, which is really wonderful, and it does make sometimes for some tight registration. Um, so I don't know at this point if we're adding more courses potentially or more seats in the courses, um, or I haven't actually checked in on that lately. I should have done that before we started. But um, there will be seats for students to reg register for either a call 100 or a call 150 over the summer. Um, so just keep an eye on that, but don't stress too much about it when you're looking at it, because those numbers may change when it gets a little bit closer to summer registration for students. Thank you. Um, so just to make sure I understand the scheduling process, you make one in the summer, then an advisor will check it. Um, and then you meet, and is it through Banner where you make your schedule or you get an email to for a time to make your schedule? So I guess just overviewing again, like the two pieces of registration and then how you do it. Yeah, so um, if you're talking about kind of the planning piece of it, then they'll make an academic plan or a schedule, essentially. It'll be both. They'll think about kind of what requirements they want to take. And that's really, again, what College Studies walks you through is, you know, thinking about your requirements. What does that look like based on your transfer credits, if you have any? You know, what do you want to try and take in your first semester for sure? And maybe first two semesters? What kind of courses does that mean you take? Um, and so there's that piece that you'll walk through with College Studies. Um, so that will help you develop a plan and have you develop a plan for registration specifically and what courses you want to register for and any backup courses you might need um, for that just to have a couple plans in mind. Um, and so that piece will be done through college studies and then basically through June and then early July for first year students um, and for the month of June for transfer students. Um, and then a peer advisor will look at that and give you feedback on that, um, which is why most students register for a portion of their schedule in that first registration round because they can get potentially their call 100 set and maybe a proficiency or something if they need it. And it, it's a piece of their schedule that a peer advisor has reviewed and given them feedback on. And then they would meet with their faculty advisor during orientation and their faculty advisor would review what they've registered for and the plan that they made over college studies and then give them some feedback at that point to do the rest of their schedule and the rest of their registration during orientation. So they will do the official faculty advisor meeting during orientation, but they will be able to get their schedule reviewed by peer advisors who have been trained by our office um, and have obviously built their own schedules in the past and gone through that process and college studies before. Um, so they are good to give some feedback to do that first um, summer registration window. I hope that answered the question. And for the credit for foreign language requirement, it, it very varies very much in scenario. So I went ahead and pasted that information into the Q&A, so I encourage you to go through that since we're coming close to the end of our time. Um, I don't understand what is the term on tripod, tripod. That part I didn't, either of you understand that one? No, nope, let's get um, So just to clarify, is it one call 100 um, in the fall and 150 in the spring or the same semester or two each semester? They only need one of each. So students only need one call 100 and one call 150. Um, and so typically we'd say take one in one semester and one in another. That would be ideal. That way you could spread out um, those two requirements. Some students do end up taking them in the same semester. Um, so that's a possibility. It just depends on kind of how their schedule fits together um, and how that all you know, comes to be, but they don't have to take them in order. Like they can take the 150 before they take the 100. That's totally fine. They just need to take one of each of those requirements. And then, you know, ideally don't take them both at the same time, but it happens and students do just fine. Um, okay. um, call where you can call, find the book. Check the chat. There's an open course listing you can see. Would join the symphony orchestra satisfy the art proficiency? I believe so. Yes, I, I'm 
I believe it does. Um, there's typically, I think, a course that's associated with it. And again, if that course has an arts attribute on it, then that would meet the proficiency. Um, they just need to make sure it's enough credits. Um, but that that's something that really degree works is a tool that students should become familiar with checking early and often, which I think you all will, which is great. Um, because that is what tracks your requirements. That's what we use to track graduation requirements and make sure everybody's on track. And that's where you can see where things are meeting requirements. You can run um, future um, plans and it can tell you where a course kind of slots in. So yes, I would say typically if they've been enrolled in a course that, that has the arts proficiency, then they're good to go. Um, yes. I think Megan, I mean, you put the, put the tribe guide checklist if you haven't already. Um, we also have to use the same language in high school. I can say you don't, um, but do go ahead and read that foreign language proficiency um, page. I know we keep saying to read um, because it has a lot of little details. Um, can transcripts be sent digitally from the school? Miranda? Um, yeah, usually they're sending it through Parchment or NSC. So it usually won't come directly like from the school registrar to us. They send it directly to us through a third party company. Um, so I would reach out to them and just see exactly how they send their transcripts. <laughs> Um, and if you have any questions after they explain to you their process, you can definitely send us an email to see if that'll work for us. Um, we'll figure it out somehow, but generally they are sending it. When you order it from their website, you're technically ordering it from Parchment or NSC to come to us. So that's <laughs> Thank you. And Sabrina, I have a quick question. Well, this webinar ends exactly at one, correct? Um, it's supposed to. You can go a little bit over if you need to. Um, it's um, up to your availability. Um, I'd say, well, what I was going to do is try to summarize again the last few questions. And then also, I will, I will ask them a few more of these questions. And we might go like a minute past one. But I just want to remind anyone, if we don't for some reason get to your question, make use of the emails on the screen right now. Um, you can email the questions to those inboxes and we will get back to you. Um, if not today, it is a holiday at William and Mary on Monday, so someone will respond to you by Tuesday of next week. Um, how did the students get the peer advisors, Megan? Did they email them? The peer advisor is going to email them, so they will. Um, there's some dates in college study that will outline that for them when they should hear from their peer advisor. So the peer advisor will reach out to them through college studies um, to make that connection. And someone asked about then when when again did the faculty advisors jump in? So peer advisors help over the summer. And then when do they meet their faculty advisor? Orientation. So then when everybody's back on campus for orientation is when they'll meet their faculty advisor. Um if all 100, 150 are first year courses, how can some of these courses already be filled if first year students haven't registered yet? Um, so we do have first year students, um, so basically rising sophomores that may need that requirement. And so there are some students that are registering. Um, they're meant to be done in your first year, but just by availability and because the classes are small and um, sometimes it's just a little bit tricky to get in one that, that fits your schedule or makes sense for you for that semester. Um, isn't a topic that you're interested in. There um, are many reasons why that kind of works or doesn't work. And so sometimes there are rising sophomores that need that. Um, and so then that's, they would have registered already for those courses um, in the spring for the fall. So that's why you're gonna see some seats already taken up in there. As I say, don't stress, like if for some reason this your student doesn't get their call 100 or 150 and at the first round of registration or something happens closer to the start of the semester, like there are points at which they can adjust. Um, and that's what their advisor is there for. That's what we're here for. If you need anything like that, like they start to get worried, but don't stress too much. Sometimes that just happens by the nature of the schedule and we can figure out, you know, best plans to get that taken care of within, I would say the first three semesters really ideally. Um, in college studies programs, how do they find that the college studies program again? They'll be enrolled in that in Blackboard, and then we'll send an announcement out through Blackboard. And then we are hosting a webinar um, on June 1st when it launches as well at 3.30 to 4.30. Um, so you can get some more information then too. We have two more questions. 
Your math deficiency requirement, can we take it somewhere else? Some, somewhere else it doesn't have to be taken early. It can be taken elsewhere. Um, we have a lot of students take courses over the summer or over winter. Um, I am also the person that handles uh, the requests for that and the permissions for that. So um, basically, you'll want there's a form to fill out for that as well, um, which we can put in the chat. Or if you just want to email our email, we can provide that. It'll be a quick Qualtrics they fill out just saying what course they want to take and where. And we'll give you permission and let you know exactly how it's going to transfer over. Um. So I'm going to read two more questions to everyone out there, and then we will to respect everyone's time. But again, um, feel free to get the questions to us um, on the email. Um, how is the student supposed to submit their high school transcript? They're still still unclear. Oh, did you just handle it? Through yeah, class? sorry, I just answered that. Just for clarification, oh. we don't take high school transcripts. Um, there's nothing, no information that I take off of that. Um, so really, it's admissions that you'd want to talk to about high school transcripts. Um, I only handle college. Last question on this chat. If a student's coming from a community college with 60 credits, do they get priority for, I'm guessing, registration? Sort of. Um, so basically, registration is based on social class and the number of credits you have or the number of full-time semesters you took is how social class is based. So if they took to get 60, what, four full-time um, semesters as opposed to two, which would be 30 credits, they'll be a class high, higher than someone with only 30. So technically, yes. Um, it, it'll be based on their class, though, not the number of credits. Thank you. Um, and I, 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 I feel like I'll answer one more question. The webinars, someone asked about the webinars. The webinars that are offered through our office, the Office of Undergraduate Academic Affairs, are going to be um, Tuesdays and Thursdays from 3.30 to 4.30. We are going to record those, um, and they will be placed on our website afterwards. So if you don't want to send, more information will be coming out to you from multiple offices. So thank you all so much for attending. We were glad to have such a proud, good crowd. Um, again, feel free to email our offices at these addresses. And um, we look forward to working with you, the students, um, over this summer and seeing you on campus this fall. Thank you.